excitement, gunfire, medical jargon, insurance premiums. We've got it all. <laughs> This brawl, Don Wagon gets the call. No policy, too big or small. On wings of steel, we come for all. Life out on the line. This job we were assigned. Life signs in decline. We raise the clock, beat the deadline. Don Wagon, we're not heroes. Not Superman, not zeros. But no matter what may happen, you can. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sinless. Before we jump into the episode, please do us a favor. Leave us a five-star review on your preferred podcasting app. Or if you're watching on YouTube, hit us with a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It's just a few clicks for you, but it means the sixth world to all of us. If you're interested in supporting us, check out our Patreon. And if you want to interact with the cast of the show, you can join us on Discord. Links will be in the episode description. And with that out of the way, let's meet the cast. Hey, I'm Miz. Um, I'm a TTRPG designer. You can find me at Miz Does Arts on X. And today I'm playing B, the human caster blaster, and completely addicted to sugar. I'm Big Spoon. I'm a cast member over on the AP Gaming Real YouTube channel, and I'm playing Cade, the pilot and drone op uh, with a need for speed. This is Austin. You may recognize my voice as the co-host of the Shadow Running on Empty Lore podcast. I'm going to be playing Duncan Grumbly, our awakened dwarf trauma specialist who may be working on a side hustle that might get him into a little bit of trouble down the line. Hi, I'm Caitlin. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash Voice. Today I will be doing Emmy the Orc, that is the Enforcer. Uh, super strong, she likes to work out, and also do some art. Hey, I'm Dan the GM. You can find me over at What the Dice. Uh, I will be playing Mel, the t troll a breacher that would rather hug people than hurt people. He also always carries around a laminated mercurial ticket as his uh, good luck charm. Hi, everybody. I'm Devin, also known as Karma, also known as the GM at an Absolute Direct Storm podcast. Tonight, I will be, I will be playing Tai Chi. A female street Sam gun bunny who re much rather rely on her luck than rather her skills. Hey everybody, I'm GM Easy Mode. You know me from the previous episodes of Sinless and also from the Shadow Running on Empty podcast for lore. And uh, I'll be everyone else as usual for the game. I hope you're excited. All right, team, here we go. Welcome into uh, the start of our season three for the sixth world for uh, New Sinless. And we are doing something a little different. We are going a whole new direction, a whole new team. And we're starting out uh, as you actually have day jobs. You all are working for Doc Wagon. Ready for those high risk response. Everybody that has one of those unique little bracelets that you can buy in the sixth world that monitors your health at all times. And should you ever end up in a seriously dangerous situation, that's where you guys will come into play, get dis dispatched out and help those that are in need that have paid their new yen already for their subscription. So once, once the signals go out that uh, high threat response is needed, that's where you guys will come into play. Right now, you're in between from going out on your last call, just hanging out at the barracks for Doc Wagon, sitting in the ready room. Uh, go ahead and 
We can go around. What are you doing while you hang out, waiting for your next call? A bee is stretched out on whatever couch we have in this ready room. A can of, you know, pile of empty dragon energy drinks on the side, just buried in this archaic looking handheld video game console. <laughs> So to help give everybody uh, a little bit of idea of where you're at, I, I probably would be helpful, right? Think of it as uh, your typical office break room. It's just you have comfy couches. There are a couple chairs. There's a couple vending machines, a refrigerator where you can hopefully keep your lunch that nobody will tamper with. But you never know. Uh, that's that's your basic kind of waiting room that you've got. I think Cade has, um, so he has a, a Doberman drone, like, laid out on the floor in front of him. Like, it's not disassembled, but uh, it's definitely got some pieces open, and he's working on it with uh, his mechanics toolkit. Uh, he also has uh, uh, Concrete Dreams hit song, Sons of Thunder, glaring on his, his comm link uh, as he's, like, adding a smoke grenade to this, uh, to this Doberman. Uh, and I'd also like to use this as my use of workshop to add a nice little feature to one of my uh, pieces of equipment. Uh, what do you want to add? Uh, the smoke bomb to the, uh, or a, a smoke grenade to my Doberman drone. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll your tech. Two hits. So it's not gonna go on exactly how you want. It'll still be on there just it doesn't look as nice as you wanted it sure uh duncan is off in the supply room taking uh inventory of the current stocks of uh resources you know all the fun stuff like uh some narco jet some stim patches some trauma patches making sure that he's so that we've got stocked up on supply for when it's needed for a run and he's marking all of those on his clipboard but then also is taking out a little black notebook from inside of his jacket and making additional notes in that and then putting it back inside tucked away for later okay are you trying to do that discreetly from everybody uh no okay no i just <laughs> it's just you know i'm just taking notes it's yeah yeah why would Nothing there be anything about... weird about two sets of notes, you know? Be overly prepared, easy. That's how you make things go smoothly. Backup notes, one might say. Exactly. He just has that cool factor behind him, wherever he stands, there's wind blowing in the background. Typically for his cape, but, you know, it's not right now. What's that magic item in D&D, &D, though? <laughs> <laughs> cape of billowing, I believe. That's yeah, the one. Billowing, yeah, billowing, <laughs> yeah. The most useless magic item. But the it's very, very it. best. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's so mm. much fun. Not if you need it's to make very a very heroic after you slay you... the dragon. <laughs> yeah, not if you need to make a charisma check easy. Oh, true. true. All right. So Duncan is taking inventory. Uh, tai Chi. Uh, tai Chi is currently sitting by a uh, slightly cracked open window uh, on in front of a table. Uh, there's clearly like a game of solitaire going on. And she's been sitting there for like probably the last 30 minutes just playing multiple games of solitaire. But in her uh, her other hand, uh, she has a um, a cigarette in it. But the entire team knows she doesn't smoke real cigarettes. They're almost like this off-brand fake cigarettes that she just smokes for some reason. But they don't have any like tobacco in them whatsoever. They those Halloween like costume cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I gotta get down to the spirit store and restock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mel or Emmy? Emmy would be in the very um, lost word. Emmy would be in the company gym, uh, doing some reps. You know, pumping that iron, trying to you know keep her muscles all warmed up. You know, doing some crunches, you know, doing some different squats, you know, trying to keep the muscles ready, trying to keep fit and get everything nice and warm because heaven knows that having to go out and kick some booty with the cold muscles is never a fun time. 
you never know where danger is lurking around the next corner. Exactly. So Mel would actually be in the garage. His jumpsuit would be like down, like tie around his waist in the back of the ambulance. He's detail cleaning everything, you know, cleaning up any blood from the last run, restocking supplies. But one of the things is he'll have the engine running and be playing uh, Mercurial's uh, Who Weeps for the Children playing. But it would be just quiet enough that you only hear it when you're inside because he's trying not to disturb anyone else's time. He's just trying to kind of you know, be prepared for the next time that they're called out. And almost on cue, the warning lights go off in the break room. Uh, you all get a simultaneous notification going off on your comm links that your team is being called in for service. There is an emergency alert that has hit dock wagon and they're dispatching teams immediately yours is on deck report immediately a draco's in the middle of a level toss the console aside and grab my armor vest sprint into the uh the hangar yeah i think Cade finishes a sweet air drum solo uh with two wrenches slams the plate back on the top of the doberman and takes off behind uh b I mean, we'll finish the last rep, grab her stuff, and start hauling her way to the dock wagon van. Hi, she's going to draw one of the last cards from her uh, deck of solitaire uh, solitaire cards, um, and she'll kind of look at it. Oh, Dret. As she realizes she lost the game, uh, she's just going to kind of shuffle the entire cards real fast. Uh, get up and grab her armor vest uh, from nearby, put it on, and start heading towards the wagon. Mel's going to reach out, grab his uh, riot shield, throw it into the back, and pull his uniform up and zip up and get into the passenger side. Uh, Duncan will grab the bag of trauma specialty tools that he keeps in the storage room and jump in the back of the wagon. All right, everybody loads up and gets ready to head out. Uh, you'll be giving your briefing in flight as you all load in to the VTOL, getting ready to take off. Uh, the brief overview that they're able to supply you with so far is there's some kind of incident that's taking place on one of the Seattle freeways being called in because ground units can't make it there because of the traffic backup from whatever incident this is. And there are at least two contracts that are signaling on the freeway that need to be picked up. Uh, ground vehicles cannot make it to the scene. They're cut off and stuck in the traffic jam that is piling up because of this incident that's happening on the freeway. So you guys are gonna be carted there via VTOL. You have at least two, two contract holders that are flashing that need retrieval that are on the freeway. Do we have like a um, police radio in here that we can uh, pick up anything that's going on at the scene or uh you're not tied in to to lone star uh air traffic this is all via what dock wagon can ascertain from drone surveillance that they send out quickly into the area uh or based off of the gps location where the bracelets start to ping from you'll know more once you get closer to the scene is basically how it plays out. I'll go astral. Uh, just <laughs> strap in and pass out and go to where the ping is at. I'd be, will you be, you'll be the first one to be able to get there ahead of everyone else because everybody knows astral's the speed of thought. Love it. Right, yeah, I'll, um, obviously I haven't seen anyone's auras, but I'll see who's injured in the area and any potential threats. So there are a lot of life 
life signs when you get to the freeway. Obviously, there's a huge traffic jam. Uh, there's still a couple that seem to be zipping around pretty quickly. So you have to assume that they're on some kind of vehicle that allows them to move around fast. There are a few fading life life signs as well. Uh, some of them, you can tell, have injuries. There's broken bones, bumped heads, contusions, things like that. Uh, there are a few gunshot wounds. Alrighty, I'll uh, <clears throat> snap back into my body. Uh, alright, alright, we have a couple gunshot wounds, broken bones, contusions... Um, how many injured life signs were there? There were at least five that you could see. Five. Okay. Besides our two contract holders, there were five other injured, but we don't need to worry about them, obviously. Uh, I think from the from the pilot seat, uh, you know, Cade's going through pre pre flight, and then like flips the uh, main ignition switch on, uh, and is. All right, folks, keep all uh, hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. And the VTOL like, starts to lift up. And then as soon as it clears the like the hangar doors, um, <clears throat> uh, he punches it because I have uh, need for speed. So immediately everybody just gets that jerk back into their seat uh, from the force of the takeoff. And you are now flying at high speeds towards your target area. Is there anything that you guys want to discuss or any plans you want to make in the short, probably 10 minute trip that you have ahead of you? Uh, B, when you were out and about uh, for the two contracts that we had, uh, did you see who was closer or... That's a great question. Uh, did I? <laughs> well, that's hard for you to tell in the astral because you have no idea who the contract holders are. You can only tell from the life signs uh, round about what their current state is from doing the, the astral perception. Uh, to actually see who your contract holders are, you'll have to get closer and scan. Right. Uh, no, no, um, Astral doesn't allow any electronics into it at all. Um, let's see, there is, like I said, gunshots on the scene, so, um, who wants, who wants some, some better reflexes? I kind of wiggle my fingers. <laughs> Hi, we'll never say no. Alrighty, I'll, uh, uh, cast increased reflexes, um, and sustain it on, uh, Paichi. What does that do? <laughs> um, I have, let's see, level three, or and reflexes two, so you get one attack and one plot point. Ooh, -hoo. very. Wait, does that stack with already attacked? I already have, so it do should, I? should, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. All right. So, team, are we planning on splitting up? Everyone knows that splitting up the party is the best way to go about things. So do we want to split up the group, try to find both targets, stick together? What's the game plan? Our Once we touch down, we should have Emmy and Taichi go for clearing debris away to make sure that we have easy access to the injured. B and I will do the scan to find and locate the actual targets on the bracelet. Kate and Mel, I want you guys on coverage for additional injured if there's anybody that you can help clear away in the meantime get them out of the way so we can make sure that we get our two extracts as quick as possible out of there what if it's uh going hot though we don't know what we're going into i mean lone star radio we ain't got nothing on that we're still waiting on relays from drones always anticipate that we're going hot it'll be hot it's always hot that went hard that was nice mm -hmm. I'm just gonna light up another cigarette. You should stop doing that. They're, you're not no, it's smoking. okay. They're not. They're not. It's a soy-based cigarette. It just makes you feel cool. Aid punches a button in the cockpit, and a no smoking sign appears. 
roll my don't, eyes and um, put it out on a seat right next to me. Don't make me tap the sign. <laughs> I can uh, I can also stabilize one of our contracts uh, if we want to lug the dock with us. Well, while you're having this conversation, uh, you'll get a priority notification come up. Uh, Doc Wagon is now reporting that two gold member contracts are signaling from your location. They will be your top priority. Is that, is that... two gold on top of? Uh... So we have four now? Yep. Wow. That changes things. Um... <laughs> Nothing like a challenge. Nothing like a challenge. How many, how many people can we load into the VTOL? Uh, along with your team that you've got right now, mm -hmm. you could fit probably four other people. As long as they, <laughs> as long as they don't need, um, if they need to be loaded in on stretchers, you can only get two. Mm -hmm. And if you really need to. As long as they're not grievously injured, like I said, you don't need to load them on stretchers. That then you could probably cram um, four or five people extra in here, but you'd be pretty cramped. Also, if we need to, I can always find my way home elsewhere. That's actually good to know. Uh, get the stretchers ready. I'm assuming they're just standard, like wheeled stretchers. Uh, yeah, I'll prep a stretcher yep, drop while, wheels. while we're flying, drop the wheels. Prepare to go for gold. So as you get closer to the freeway scene, uh, you're able to get a better idea up in the cockpit of what you're looking at. There's a massive wreck. At least eight cars. Uh, one of them is, t or one vehicle is turned over. It looks like it is a some kind of armored transport. Uh, and there's almost six or eight motorcyclists that are zooming around the area. Like di weaving in between cars, going up and down both sides. This is backing up both uh, both sides of the freeway both north and southbound. Five bucks? Oh, no. Five, <laughs> Five million says our uh, our golds are in the main vehicle in the middle there. Um, as we uh, get closer, and I think, um, like, Cade brings the VTOL into, like, kind of a uh, Akira slide, but in midair because it's vector thrust. Um, he's going to drop his uh, patrol drone, like kind of out of the bottom of the of the VTOL, and set it on like a uh, perimeter loop. Okay, what do you want to set the perimeter as? Uh, let's go with. Uh, what's the range on a heavy machine gun? Uh, we'll call like 150 meters around okay. around the the wreck. I'll lean into the cockpit. Can I make the announcement this time? <laughs> hey, folks, we wanted to take a quick moment to show some love to another great Shadowrun show. Check them out. Hello, Stuff for Shack customer. How may I stuff your shack? That's right. We're back to stuff your shack, chummer. Grab yourself a handful of stuffers, microwave those instant burritos, and get ready to get back to the shack. Are you Shadowrunners? No. No, we are Stuffer Shack employees. Well, that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. This is really strange. Returning by popular demand, this re-release of the hit 2017 Shadowrun Anarchy Actual Play podcast follows Mika and Augustus, two underperforming clerks. I don't think we're getting an award, Ben. That doesn't sound right. As they stumble through the trials and tribulations of working the night shift in a Redmond Baron's convenience store. Remaster, bigger, bolder, girthier. I like giving Brad shit. I like ruining Brad's day. I like when Brad ruins my day. Oh my god. Oh my god, Bika. I think you might have a thing for Brad. Tales from the Stuffer Shack. You guys have been going out this for a while. Yeah. And the sick twisted part is that I, I, I can't, I can't imagine my life without him.
Be my guest. Ready? I'll take the um, the little speaker off the dash. This is Doc Wagon High Response Team. You are requested to clear the area. Uh, in response, you can hear the pings and tatters of gunfire hitting off the hall of the VTOL. Emmy, after that happens, uh, well, like, if she can, just, like, jump out and just go, We said move away! And just try to, like, rage and, like, get people to get out of the way. <laughs> Popping out the hand raisers. Just intimidating out of the back of the, like, opening the side door on the VTOL and shouting out at everybody. That That's what you want to do? Yes. All right, go ahead and... <laughs> Uh, roll me an intimidation if you have it. That's rough. <laughs> I got zero hits. I am not a ca- charismatic lady. I am muscle and no tact. <laughs> That's very clear in the way that you're shouting out, trying to shout over the sound of the VTOL engines. Uh, it doesn't really look like anybody is paying any attention to you as they're still looking for a, uh, spot to be able to touch down can i hop out and try to like make room if you want to jump out of the the vtol before it touches down sure how high up are we before you do that that's (laughs) that's gonna be my next question thank you (laughs) uh right now you're you are flying over the scene but uh if you want to try to get your pilot's attention to have them lower lower down so you can hop out What's up to you? I actually have a question. Are, do we have um, rappel lines, like zip lines, that we can drop and just drop in using those? Yeah. Yes, you do. You have so, rappelling lines. So Mel is going to hit the switch to drop the rappel lines and look back at uh, Emmy. Uh, ready to go down? Hell yeah. And just whee! Just all the way down. <laughs> and Mel's, Swinging the hand raisers. <laughs> Mel's going to follow down suit with uh, his riot shield out and at the ready. And I'd like to also follow. Okay. V, anybody else? Yeah, Tai Chi will... I'll, I want to have some fun. And as she walks over, uh, her like cyber arm will kind of like open up. She'll reach inside and pull out a uh, shotgun that kind of unfolds into her hands. She'll grab the wire with her metal hand and slide down. Well, I'm doing... Duncan does the slide down as well on the line. Can I take a look and see, is there, like, a particular area where there's, like, a larger conglomeration of the bikers, like, grouped up? Or are they all just kind of... So as you're sliding down the line, go ahead and roll me a perception test. All right, anybody that has two or more, uh, you can notice that the largest amount of gang members are gathering near that overturned armored vehicle. Uh, as they exit the vehicle, uh, the VTOL, mm-hmm. I would like to um, flip on my signal locator and see if I can get an exact position on the uh, two gold contracts. Sure. Once you click that on, the, the pings are going to go off. Uh, one of them is inside the armored vehicle. Uh, the other one is coming from further up in the traffic jam. Like, not in the immediate area where everything kind of smashed together, but a little further back. And I'll, I'll mark those in, like, AR for the rest of the team as uh, priority uh, alpha and priority uh, beta. I can get him out of the armored truck uh, if someone wants to get my point into the traffic, that guy. I'm going to follow B to give them backup and shield since we are under fire. Yeah, there are the random shots that go around the area as a few of the bikers are still on their bikes zipping around. I'll follow. I'll follow with Emmy towards the uh, the other gold target mark. So it looks like from this, uh, Miz is going to or B is going to be the only one that notices what's going on. You've got one guy shouting at four others, kind of giving directions, and it looks like they're placing some... It looks like they're placing a shape charge onto the back of the doors of the vehicle. I'll uh, kind of tap Mel on the back. Shape charge, big guy. And I point at whoever's given the commands. 
That's a priority one target. Mel's going to look at the guy placing the shape charge and just yell out, Hey, 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 let's let's not do that. As he approaches shield up at the ready, like he's going to charge if he has to. Are you getting in my way? Gun him down. Uh, that's the shot that you hear. We'll roll initiative. All right. We have our initiatives. The boss has shouted out to open fire. As you guys charge forward, they were trying to put a shape charge onto the back of the car. And you shout to them to basically stop it and disperse. And the leader shouts back, screaming, let him have it. Guns start blazing, shotgun shells firing off. Uh, B is charged by somebody with a combat knife. Taishi makes quick work of uh, a few of them with their shotgun blasts, dropping the one that was next to B, the, their face just completely eviscerated with the uh, the shotgun that she's wielding. Meanwhile, Mel charges forward, thundering ahead, slams one of the gangers out of the way that was trying to set the finish setting the shape charge. It looks like they just crumple up against a vehicle that they get slammed into and they're not moving. So they're either dead or unconscious. You can't really tell. At the same time, after he shield bashes that one, he squares up behind his shield again and charges forward at the uh, leader that was shouting the orders who kind of braces themselves and takes the hit head on. Uh, and finally, at the end here, B is able to gather up some lightning and fire it off at one of the other gangers that was firing their shotgun. It looks like they've scarred up their armor and given them a little jolt. Their hair is kind of standing on end as you see the trail of electricity travel through their body. Still keeping his, or trying to keep his bead on the fast moving Taishi, this first ganger again tries to get a bead and fire their shotgun. So you're jumping out of the way as the shotgun blast is coming in. Diving away, being clear of the shot. Next is Cade's drone. Uh, Cade's drone is going to target uh, the leader that Mal has run up to and okay. uh, blast him with uh, automatic fire. All right. Unloading into the, uh, the fight that's going on. It looks like the gang leader takes advantage of cover in the area and is dodging into the cover of some parked cars. This ganger is going to rush back to the defense of his boss. Uh, or actually, he's going to try and finish setting up the charge and blast the doors open. Kate, it will be your turn as you're watching your drone's firing and missing. Uh, Mel's still kind of close by for melee, and one of the gangers is kind of dropping his weapon and running back towards the van, finishing putting the shape charge on. I think as like as Cade's circling in the VTOL, like he's like, I don't think we want, I don't think we want that to happen. Uh, and so he's going to target the ganger that is running towards the van, uh, and uh, let go with a burst from the heavy machine gun on the VTOL. Okay. <laughs> Fire away. <laughs> Don't miss. Well, you definitely get some shots into him. Uh, looks like it, he's taking it in the leg, but he's still able to manage to stay on his feet somehow from this heavy machine gun fire. But it's not looking good for him. Taishi? Uh, yeah, uh, guy right in front of me. Going to get a, another shotgun blast. Oh, this guy that you've been in a shotgun battle with? <laughs> Precisely. We're comparing shotgun sizes with each other. Mine's bigger. <laughs> Your shotgun skills ring true on this one, and you watch him just fall backwards after receiving the, the blast from you. Uh, I will then scoot forward to meet the other game. Uh, What's going on with them? 
Is he he's oh. chilling? The other ganger? Yeah, he just took heavy machine gun fire from your Vita. <laughs> oh, got it. He's now going to get finished off by heavy shotgun from my gun. All right. Yeah, it doesn't look too good for either of them. Hmm. Good. I will then uh, continue moving. And can I have a quick recap of... Because uh, I, I know there's a, there's an explosive over here. Can I have a quick recap of how these two are interacting around this, <laughs> this explosive before I fire my well, no, shotgun? The, the explosive was at the one you just oh. fired your shotgun oh, at. Oh, oh, so... Who cares then? All right, well, this guy's getting another sh my last shotgun blast. So you do shoot at him. Uh, it does look like he sees you coming somehow and is able to duck down just in time as uh, he's grazed by your shot. That takes us back to Mel. Mel is going to jump over the car he's hiding behind and try to slam down on top of him to pin him to the ground. Okay. Are you going for non-lethal here or? Yes, non I don't do lethal. <laughs> I, do, okay. I try to do non-lethal. Sure, 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 sure. Is he still standing? Uh, barely. It, it looks like there was a heavy hit. Uh, his head kind of thunks off of the side of the car uh, as you take him down. He looks a little dazed, but is still relatively conscious. I'm just going to look at him and just kind of, under my breath, apologize as I hit him again with the shield. <laughs> you smack him in the face again with the shield, and it looks like his eyes just close as his head bounces off of the pavement. I'm going to radio to the team. Um, hey, uh, I think I got this head guy down. Reach loud and clear, Mel. And uh, I want to move up to the armored vehicle. Mm -hmm. Sure. Knock on the side. This is Doc Wagon. High response. Back away from this side of the vehicle. <laughs> All right. So as you're doing that, let's head over to the other side for any and Duncan who are running towards the other priority target. So when you guys get there, uh, after hustling down the street, you can hear the sounds of shotgun blasts and heavy machine gun fire from your VTOL uh, going on over near the armored car as you get closer to uh, this car that's just kind of parked. Uh, it's not damaged. It doesn't look like it. Um, there's some other people that look like they're hunkered down in their cars as you're running by, uh, afraid, hearing all this gunfire going off and still seeing some of the um, motorcycle gangers zipping back and forth. They're kind of just shooting wildly into the air, like keeping people in their cars as opposed to actually shooting at anybody. Wasting ammo. Noted. <laughs> yes, like it's candy. Just pop, 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 pop. But the two of you can make it to this vehicle where there's a priority alert going off for one of your gold level members. When we get to the car, can we see in the car? Yeah. The brief glance inside the slightly tinted windows of the car that looks like there's somebody sitting in the driver's side and they have their hand clutched over uh, their chest and their other arm is kind of off to the side. Is the car door open or unlocked? The car door is in fact locked. Emmy, can you get that car door off? Oh, absolutely. And I'll just try to, like, grab and just rip it off its hinges. All right, so we're just going to strength it off here. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All right, digging your hands somehow against the door as hard as you can and just wrenching it away. Uh, you're able to pull the door uh, open, at least, like, where it cracked open and you've kind of rolled part of the door frame away. <laughs> So now you can open the door. All right, get it open the rest of the way. And this is Doc Wagon. We're here to help. <laughs> Points to his chest frantically as he's coughing and sputtering. Oh, uh, Duncan, this is a you thing. And I'll kind of scooch out of the way to let him scooch in. 
Uh, taking a look at it, would I would it be better for me to do as a trauma patch or to just go straight up heal magic on it to try to like can uh... I can, can can I tell that it is it like a projectile wound or is it like does it look like it's like an accident? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any blood splatter on his shirt. There's no damage to the car that you can see. It looks like he was trying to grab something from the center console as his as he's clutching his chest. I mean, you can you can straight up heal if you want. None of these seem like they would help with that. <laughs> it's you. Right now. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure heal would be effective since he's not. Yeah, because it's usually just physically wounded, like actual wound physical injury, right? It seems to be right. What it's right. It's okay. usually usually healing is like a, a closing of physical wounds or staunching bleeding or something like that. Some type of patch up work rather than yeah. Th this is technically <laughs> in the process of being wounded. I, I see. I see. So 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 trauma patch. I think is is the way to go on this. <laughs> uh, a trauma patch. Could help or could send him further into this uh, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cardiac problem that he is having. I see. I see. From the quick assessment that you're able to to give to him. I see. Now, okay. So as a trauma specialist here, easy. Uh -huh, is there yeah. anything that I would be able to say, do a roll for to determine uh, what the best course of action would be at this point, so I don't kill this guy? <laughs> what 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 would that be? What would that look like? Uh so from your knowledge of being an expert trauma specialist, mm -hmm. uh, if he's having a cardiac uh episode, then you need to either try and calm him or or get him onto the VTOL quickly so you can rush him to emergency services in case he does fall into a heart attack. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then I'll say, uh, Duncan will just say to him, Sir, first things first, you're going to need to calm down. You got to regulate your breathing. Your body might be going into cardiac arrest right now. My partner here is going to pick you up and put her and put you on her back so that way we can get you back to our takeoff vehicle to make sure that there isn't any long lasting damage that occurs here. But I need <sighs> you to calm down while, while we get you. There's, there's, bu there's bullets and, and people shooting. And, oh my, it's okay. Just they're it not just really hurts. I'm sir. going just... to take such good care of you, sir. Sir, good news. They're not shooting at you. Our comrades already have the rest of that under control and taken care of. So at this point, we just got to get you out of here and we'll make sure that we get you out of here in one piece. But you got to do what we say, okay? I need you to give me, give me a nod if you agree that you know what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Yeah, I understand. All right. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Emmy, get him on the back. Let's go. <laughs> just... Sling him over your shoulder. Well, actually, can like... I like princess carry him? Yeah, you know? if you want to, yeah. Then I'll like sing to him as I'm like carrying him, you know. You know. <laughs> uh, is there a particular song you want to try to sing to him to calm him down? Um, I don't know. Let's just go White Rabbit, you know, as we're going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to do while uh, you're sort of carrying him back? Um, are you headed back towards you where you guys all rappelled down? Because you can see your VTOL just circling the area, and then there was that heavy machine gun blast that happened. Um, on the in the area that we're in, can I check to see if the other ping is near us from where we were? Because this was the gold priority yeah. ping, but there was still another right. ping, right? That was here. Yes. Go ahead okay. and roll your perception, please. Okay. Two other pings, right? Yeah, there were four total. Yes, you can pick up. There are two others that are actually close by here, uh, headed back in the direction that you originally came from. May I also retcon it as I was like pulling him out to Krenthus carry him? I try uh -huh. to see what he was reaching for in the console. Uh, looks like he's trying to reach for a bottle of prescription pills. Okay, I'll try to grab those and be like, uh, Duncan, is, are, are these okay to give him? Uh, easy. Are those okay? To get? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are. They are for um his heart medication. So heart medication? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just whether you sure. think it's okay to give it to him now uh, when he's having an episode, or it's up to you. 
I see. Uh, let's hold on to him for now. Take him with him. If it looks like he's starting to get in worse shape, we'll have that as a fallback. But I don't want to give him anything that'll overstimulate him while he's already in this condition. So the two other pings are on our way back to where we would be going mm -hmm. to meet back up with the group. Okay, then we'll just... Yeah, they would just be off uh, off a little from the initial route that you ran directly yeah. towards the priority target. Okay, then uh, I'll tell M to start heading back. Uh, I'll, M, head back towards the group to meet back up with them. I want to go do a quick scan on these other two pings that we got in. And then while I start heading that way, I also want to radio into Cade and tell him, Cade, we got gold one picked up out of the car looks like it might be a cardiac episode so he's gonna need immediate uh retrieval m has him right now try to get as close as you can so that way we can make sure we get him up into the plane in time roger that boss and then i'll start heading towards the other two pings uh while i'm heading there as well can i also radio to tai chi yeah what do you want to say tai chi i'm heading towards the other two pings how's everything looking on your end for the other priority target Oh, doing good. Kill some guys. But this one's fine. All right. Can I have you uh, come back down the bridge towards the way me and them initially head? We can meet up. I might need a might need another pair of hands on these on these other two to make sure that we can get them out as well. On my way, boss. And that'll do oh. it for Duncan. <laughs> well, Duncan, as you're getting close to the other ping, you can see you can kind of see what it is. Uh, there's somebody that has gotten out of their car. Uh, it looks like they're clutching their leg as uh, blood is pooling around that area. That looks like a convenient wound in which I could apply a heal spell <laughs> as though to stop injury. Okay, fantastic. Mm, 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 yes, mm, mm, you mm. might be able to do this. Yeah. Yes, 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 quite. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'll, I'll move up to the course. Sir, I'm with uh, Doc Wagon. Uh, give me a second, and I'll get your wound treated here, so that way we can get you away from this catastrophe area. Uh, uh wait, is this going to increase my premiums? Uh, you know, that's something that you're going to have to discuss uh, with your representative. Uh, I, I am only here to apply medicine and help you. Uh, do, do, you do you think I could uh, um, wait and maybe get myself to a hospital? Uh, with the amount of blood that you're losing, uh, sir, I would not advise against that. Oh, okay, he's already gone. All right, I'm taking a taking evasive action here, sir. I want you to know that by not responding, you are consenting to my help. Uh, whether or not this affects your premium, again, you will have to take that up with the customer service team at a later date. I'm going to go ahead and heal this leg up here now. And then I will go ahead and uh, cast a heal on his leg. All right, so you uh, you are able to start to get that wound to close, and the bleeding does slow as you watch the flesh knit back together through the powers of magic. But remember, that bullet is still in there. I'm just here to make sure that he stops bleeding. The rest of it's up to him. All right, <laughs> I'm just... Now, are you are you just gonna leave him there once you do the heal spell, or are you gonna? No, I'm gonna slap like, a stim patch him. on his forehead. You're gonna slap a stim patch on his forehead. Yeah, it's the quickest way to get the reaction to make sure that they wake back up in time. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, slapping it onto his forehead, mm -hmm. you watch his eyes immediately pop open, like. Oh! Oh! Ah! So Sir, I have good news for you. The bleeding has stopped. However, there may still be a bullet or some type of debris in your body at this point. I would advise getting to a hospital to get that checked out. However, you should be able to walk out away from the from the area here now if you don't mind uh, getting yourself. Oh. Wait, is this one of the is this one of the people that pinged? Is this one of our yeah? Our this this was one oh, of okay. Your, well, no, this was one of your your non VIPs, pings, but ping. But he's not one of the pings. VIPs. I got you. Yes. Uh, uh, if you look over to the left, sir, you'll notice a group of my comrades. If you want to meet back up with them, we can go ahead and get you airlifted out of the area and make sure that we can get you dropped off at a hospital location so they can check for uh, said leftover that may in fact be in your leg at this current moment. Uh, can you walk, is, sir, is it, or are you going to need assistance? Is it dangerous? To, uh, is it bad that it's still in there? What, what uh, happens? I mean, I mean, to so be this honest, is just gonna rip open again. What 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 what's supposed to happen now? No, no, no. See, at this point, sir, it's just a little tiny bit of debris. It might cause a little bit of discomfort for you in the long term, depending on what the material was made out of. It could lead to lead poisoning. 
which could wait, wait, lead poisoning. So in order to make sure that that doesn't become the case again, we will be vetoing you to a hospital location for no, 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 no. That's not my that's not my network package for non-invasive surgery in order to remove any debris that may be returning. And once again, it feels so much better. You will need to speak with the representative regarding how this is going to affect your claim and your premium going forward in the future. Can I? Can I? Can I just do it my, myself? I, I'm so I would so highly advise against and... that because I do not believe that you are a trained even... medical professional. Wait, did did you use did you use magic? Uh, whether or not I used magic, sir, is not a disclosure at this point in time. That has no prevalence <laughs> you... to the situation, as your leg has been healed. No, no, please it make does. your way. Please no, you make don't your understand. way. I, I can't afford that. That's not my premium package. I didn't ask for for magical healing. What are you doing? Uh, that, sir, that's an says, extra charge? How does that work? It says clearly in your terms of service that if you pass out, that does give us consent in order to perform healing as is mandated to save your life as you are still a member of the coverage. Uh, now, but, whether or not it includes medical coveraging, again, sir, I am going to refer you to your representative uh, in order to take that up with customer service. Now, are you able to stand up and walk your way over to my comrades that we might be able to get you out of here so we can get your leg looked at? I think so. Fantastic. Uh, go ahead and do that. I'm going to take a look here. There should be another person that requires assistance. Once you get there, just let them know that I sent them your way. Okay. All right. And then I'll do another scan over for the next ping. Uh, they're, uh, they're across the median and the other side. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like this one is a little bit worse, worse off as you're getting closer to the initial crash area. Mm -hmm. Uh, Looks like the front end of this vehicle has been smashed in. Airbags are deployed. Uh, there could be a slight fire that is starting. You can smell like burning rubber and fuel as you get closer. I see. Uh, I'm assuming that the door is stuck as I try to get it open. Uh, do you want evens or odds? I'll take evens. The door is not stuck. Cool. All right. Well, open the door are they in the driver's side seat i assume uh yes the driver is face first into the airbag uh looks like there's a little bit of blood um do you want to check their vitals yeah go ahead and roll me your biotech skill or first aid uh this person is unconscious but alive but alive they have a they still have a heartbeat their pulse is going slow but steady. They're they're definitely just knocked out. Okay. Uh, could I disconnect them from the seatbelt and start to pull them out from the vehicle? Uh, if you want to. I I would like to, yes. <laughs> All right. Are you carrying this person or are you just setting them outside of their possibly burning car? Uh, well, I'm going to, like, get them out, and then once they're on the ground, I'll just, like, try to, like, pull them away, because I want to pull them away from a vehicle that is on fire and may potentially explode. I mean, you don't want to stand next to those. It's usually a bad time. Sure. All right, you are heading back that way, pulling them away from the burning car. Meanwhile, back at the armored car. Uh... I'm going to spend a plot point. Oh dear. Hooray! Everything was going so well. B, you were able to shout into the armored vehicle to tell anybody to get away from side, the side of the door that the response team is here. However, Mel, when you put that second hit into the gang leader and he passes back out it flings his hands back as well as his head into the pavement and he just happens to be holding something in his hand and it causes the button to press so whoever is standing around the armored vehicle <laughs> uh oh <laughs> <laughs> please please uh, we're going to be rolling me uh, a defense roll please and this is why I stayed in the VTOL B you jump out of the way 
as the charge goes off, uh, just kind of leaving a ringing in your ears. But you have no idea what it does to anybody inside. Um, I want to like scramble to my feet as quickly as possible um, mm -hmm. and peek astrally, see if I can see any life signs. There are two life signs inside the armored vehicle. Uh, one of them seems pretty faint. Okay. I'll uh, shout over to Mel. Mel, get in here! And kind of waving the smoke away from my face, I'll just try to like get into the back of the vehicle. You kind of shout louder than what you normally would. Um, but I want to do like an ascensing on this fading life sign as I'm trying to get to him. It looks like they've suffered injury from the crash. They have a broken arm. Uh, one of their legs is dislocated. Uh, their hearing, their eardrums are shot. Gotcha. And then last question, is this actually the policy holder or is it the other guy? Well, you're looking astrally, so you have no idea. I'll, uh, I'm assuming we have like AR glasses or something to check that stuff. So I'll sw switch out of astral and and take a look. Take a look. The one that is more grievously injured is definitely your target. Excellent. With the dislocated, the dislocated leg, and the broken arm, and possibly some head injury. Uh, definitely bur busted eardrums. Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna use heal on this guy. See if I can stabilize him. Okay. Roll away. Roll away. I don't yep. have any biotech, so I'm just... <laughs> Using the heal spell. <laughs> this will fix everything. This will fix it. <laughs> you hear groaning <laughs> and, uh, and moaning from the person as their leg snaps back into place with a crack and uh, their broken arm knits itself back correctly uh, it all looks very off <laughs> as you're watching all right you gotta hold still this is gonna hurt even more and i'll like take a piece of like a cloth or whatever and just stuff it in his mouth <laughs> so, he's... <laughs> so he's not screaming in pain <laughs> exactly okay uh i mean he's definitely stable <laughs> Perfect, and I'll shout again over my shoulder, much louder than I want to. Mel, Mel. Mel is going to be basically hopscotching over ch cars to get to the armored vehicle quicker. So instead of like you know running around, he's just if there's a car in his way, he's either going to jump over it or just run across it. He doesn't care a collateral damage. He is coming to get help. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's up, B? How can help? This is our gold too. Uh, he's stable, but he's really injured. We need to get him on a stretcher and up into the VTOL ASAP. Uh, did we bring any stretchers down with us? Uh, I don't think so, but we're going to get no. him out of here first. <laughs> Mel is going to start pulling doors open to get as clear a path to get to this guy as possible. Uh, when, we're, when we're doing the communication... Is this an inline that all of us can hear, or is this like peer to peer communication? No, this like, is this like a, an open a, a team chat, an open channel? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hearing them say that, I'd I'd like to tag in and go, "Hey, can you get over where B and Mel's location is and send a send a, a stretcher down on one of the on one of the lines? Use a clip harness and send it down to him, so that way we can get this guy stabilized." Will do. And uh, Cade will pilot over, over top of the armored vehicle, and then like set it to hover, go into the back, clip one of the, the uh, stretchers, and lower it down. Okay. And then he's gonna go look for like a uh, once it's down, he'll go look for a landing, like a clear area to land that's kind of like equidistant from everyone. Okay. Uh, you could probably land it in the median between the two highways. It might be uh, a little difficult, but 
Okay. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll go for that. As uh, well, while he's landing down, uh, can I radio again? Uh, Taichi, where you at? Need your help with getting a body over here. Uh, as you radio over, I turn the corner. <laughs> oh, what fantastic right timing here. as yeah. usual. <laughs> All right, grab the ankles. We're just gonna like two man lift the guy over at this point because only one stretcher. <laughs> Uh, you can get him up onto the stretcher and then are you wheeling him back? Don't all answer at one time. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, we nodded. Me and, me, <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, me and sorry. Carmen nodded. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, you have yeah. to, what have what to is this, some things. kind of audio podcast? Yeah, yeah exactly. Great, great radio. Great radio. <laughs> you, you didn't, AI, you didn't, hear, the, you didn't hear the rattle? It's, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I must have missed the rattle of heads. My bad. Not My yet. Bad. <laughs> My bad. Sorry, so podcast much. listeners. Yes, that is exactly what we would like to do, easy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. I I appreciate it so much. Uh, <laughs> Cade, you're bringing the VTOL down to rest. Uh, some of the gangers are still in the vicinity, but having not heard any word from their boss, that they don't seem to be getting close to the crash site. When he when he lands, um, uh, his the Doberman will jump out one side and he'll grab his uh, uh, Yamaha ride and then go out the other side and basically like take up covering positions. Okay. I was going to say, as soon as I see him land, I'm getting this uh, stretcher into the VTOL. All right. So, Cade, you can see uh, one stretcher being wheeled by B and Mel, just pushing it. Another one is coming the opposite direction with Tai Chi and Duncan. And here comes Evie being the first one to get to you. Carrying somebody in her arms. Just singing songs to him, trying to like pet his hair and like calm him down as I'm running. <laughs> this is the sight that is appearing before you. Eventually you can get these three loaded up. What do you want to do once you have your two gold members and one extra on board? What happened to the guy with they're... the busted leg? Yeah. Is, is he refusing medical assistance? <laughs> he's, he's limping very slowly. It's taking him a while to get there. Almost as if he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> Once the heart attack guy is there, um, and, you know, in the VTOL, I will go to broken ankle guy and be like, here, um, or here, I can help you and pick him up too and carry him. Be like, uh... No, that's, that's, uh, I, I'll, I'll make it, uh, just... If you no. have to take off without me, I I understand. I, I no, can get back to we, the car. We are taking you to the hospital. You are going to be fine. Do oh, not no, worry. I'm Do not fret. Like so much bad. You're going to be fine. I'll pop up behind Emmy. Be like, does this guy need some um persuading? <laughs> I, I I think he I think he just I don't know what he needs, but he'll be fine. From from across the way, Duncan's just going to go, Sir, as I clearly stated, we are going to get you the medical assistance you need. That leg needs to be examined by a professional. Please let the giant woman carry you onto the VTOL securely. Thank you. <laughs> I know I'm very tall, but I promise I'm not going to hurt you, sir. I'm here to help. He just kind of sighs and gives up and then reaches up for you to help him hobble up onto the VTOL. You guys have your two priorities, and now you have two extras. Radio up to uh, Cade. Get us out of here, Cade. And everybody on board? Uh, everybody is on board. You are heavy uh, what, four extras? So it's mm -hmm. cramped back there, especially with two stretchers. Uh, Cade will take off, uh, and then uh, I, I assume our, like our home base was not like the nearest hospital, um, but he's going to the nearest like dock wagon hospital. Okay, the, ne the nearest hospital that has uh, contracts for dock wagon. Yeah, at at high speed, of course. All right, again the <laughs> just blast from <laughs> even some of the uh, your two extra passengers who are oh, as the VTOL takes off. Are you radioing ahead to the hospital? Uh, yeah, he'll uh, uh, radio ahead, 
and uh, it was one two critical cases or like two too badly injured to just need uh one unconscious two no two unconscious one potential cardiac and one uh in need of examination yeah, yeah one in critical condition too i'd say so he'll radio ahead with the status of the patients and uh uh tell them to have like a, a trauma team waiting on the the landing platform okay they'll respond back Trauma, one trauma team standing by, you're cleared for platform three. And you guys will be able to get to this hospital and do your first initial drop off. That is first episode, everybody! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Excitement, gunfire, medical jargon, insurance premiums, we've got it all! <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sinless. As always, we appreciate all of our patron support. After all, we couldn't make this show without you. So a big thank you to The Rogue 404, An Absolute Drexstorm of a Podcast, Tim, Tommy, Michael, Flatty One Gaming, Manic, Sander, Winter, Jim, The Musician, Shadow Dagger, Oliver, Ancient Relic, What the Dice, Dat Booty, Techno Druid, Con 9000, MS, Travis, Asthma Admiral, Ms, Joseph, Big Spoon, QM1 De Leon, Devix, Dylan, Dimitri Wacha Wacha, and Shakalaka. Thank you all so much for supporting us and helping us to keep the bills paid so we can keep making the show that you love. Thank you all again. Let us know how you feel about the new season in the comments section or head on over to our Discord. Let us know what you think there. Till the next episode, have a good one, chummers. The Tops Company Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Tops Company Inc. has granted permission to Critical Hits to use such names, logos, artwork, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Critical Hits in any official capacity whatsoever.